What's going on YouTube? This is NecroSteve and it's time for week two of the LBA. Now this week, the Eterna City Enders are up against the Portland Timbers. And if you haven't seen my team matchup analysis, you knew that going into this, um, first of all, it would be helpful to go watch that. It's pretty short. Uh, but going into this battle, I was really, really worried about Zorark. And um, to a lesser extent, definitely also um, considering some other threats that he had, such as the um, Terrakian, because it has pretty good neutral coverage on my team. But he actually did end up bringing those specific threats. So on the other side of things though, he did end up bringing Mew and Alakazam, which I am completely okay with going into this. My game plan upon seeing the team preview screen was just to keep Weavile healthy and try to hit as many things as I could with Rotom, allowing kind of Venusaur and Togekiss to clean up. Um, I did end up bringing Scarf Togekiss, and uh, I ended up bringing my offensive Don Fan holding Rindo Berry. He does have Breloom, um, which Don Fan can't really take on with the Rindo Berry, but I can take an Energy Ball from Galvantula. Should Galvantula have Energy Ball or Giga Drain, I can take that hit and KO it back. Um, I also went with Physically Defensive Venusaur, which proved very, very useful in this battle. And I finally went with a Choice Bandit Tyrantrum, just because the neutral coverage that Tyrantrum has between the stab moves, he couldn't really deal with it. So if I can bring in Tyrantrum after he KO one of my Pokemon and fire off one of those fantastically banded hits, uh, I knew it'd be difficult for him to deal with. Um, also Rotom, I ended up putting Leftovers on because I realized, as Guy pointed out, it just has really good coverage against his team between Electric and Ghost. So uh, I wanted to keep it healthy and utilize that paint split where possible and kind of spread some burns around as well. Um, so that's kind of the game plan going into this. I figured he would lead off with either Landorus or Aggron. Um, maybe Mew if Mew had the capability to set up some entry hazards, but I wasn't sure if his Mew was going to be that set. Um, again, the game plan at the start of the battle was try to get as much information as I can about his sets. Several of his Pokemon are very versatile and can run very different types of sets depending on what you want them to do. Even Aggron, as you can see, could be a physical attacker or a mixed attacker. He can be physically defensive or especially defensive. He might even set up entry hazards. Um, so I just ended up setting up my stealth rocks, expecting him to do the same. Uh, nothing like the complimentary exchange of rocks, even in the Lithia League. Now he does end up going for Dragon Tail, which is fantastic to see because that immediately tells me that he's a much more defensive set and he might even have uh, something like Rest to recover his HP. Now I was pretty happy that he uh, phased me out into my Mega, into my Venusaur because it gave me an opportunity to go straight for the Mega Evolution. And I can hit him with Earthquake, but since he is using Dragon Tail, this Earthquake does pitiable damage because he's probably max physical defense. Um, also this Venusaur is more defensively and bulky inclined than it is offensive. It kind of just has Earthquake to hit things like Heatran or things that are quad weak to ground. Uh, so that was a crit and it still didn't do anything. Um, and I don't think that crit really mattered just because of how little damage it did. Uh, he does get up his stealth rocks and he dragon tails me out into the worst possible thing, which is Weavile. This is my primary win condition for this battle. So I can't have it take extra stealth rock damage because that's gonna mount up really, really quickly with Life Orb. And so we're just gonna go directly out into Dawn Fan expecting uh, hopefully an Earthquake or an Iron Head or something to that extent. I didn't want to go into Togekiss expecting the Earthquake or anything because you could easily go for a Rock-type move, or in this case the Heavy Slam, which will one-hit KO Togekiss. Now, I do force him into a position with Dawn Fan where he has to choose, do we, does he want the Entry Hazards up or does he want to keep on phasing? Because if I can keep the Entry Hazards away from the field, then him phasing is kind of pointless. Uh, I did take Sleep Powder off of Venusaur right before the battle, and I really wished I had put it back on there because I would have had several chances already to put Aggron to sleep, uh, which would have been pretty useful. Now here I expected him to go for Stealth Rock instead of going for Dragon Tail, so I directly switch on into Dawn Fan, and I know I can live any one hit that he wants to go for, and it's important that I put Aggron into a range where I can finish it off with something else, and even my offensive Dawn Fan doesn't do that much with Earthquake. I was really disappointed by that damage. Fortunately though, the HP and defensive investment that I put on that Judge Tress specifically was for this battle to, try to take those physical hits a little bit better. It pays off and I'm able to get rid of his entry hazards before he takes down Don Fan with a heavy slam. So while Don Fan didn't get any KOs in this match, especially me using the offensive one, it definitely paid a big role because now I'm able to go out into Banded Tyrantrum 
and there he could just switch into um, Landorus, but I didn't think he would. I figured he wanted his entry hazards up. Uh, so I just went for the Banded Earthquake, and that's able to take out Aggron from that amount of HP, even though it's not stabbed like Donphan was. I was I was really impressed with that damage. Um, but since Aggron was a Stealth Rock user, I did not expect his Landorus to be using Stealth Rock. Uh, I actually expected his Landorus to maybe be Scarfed or a setup set of some sort. So I really need to get some information on it. We're going to go on in the Physically Defensive Venusaur here to take any hit from him and hopefully see what he wants to do. Now that rock slide and the leftovers tells me, huh, that's interesting. I'm not sure what this Landorus is. Um, he did not do very much damage at all with the rock slide or with the earthquake. Uh, and then I see how much damage I do with Giga Drain. And it's possible that he was running kind of a pseudo bulky offensive set. But since Giga Drain did that much damage and I'm not invested and earthquake actually did a pretty much good amount too. I think he's kind of a mixed um, type of Landorus with a little bit of defense, a little bit of attack. Uh, but that's okay, expecting another Earthquake, I can just go right on into Rotom. And I am making a little bit of a risk uh, unnecessary here because he could have Knock Off, which would of course one hit KO Rotom, and I do need it to spread some damage around his team. But I figured that he would just go for Rock Slide, uh, just because the Knock Off is fairly obvious. Um, but he actually does go for Rock Slide, and Rotom takes it just because it's not a stab type attack and because my opponent doesn't seem completely physically oriented for the offensive stat. Now, surprisingly, he, um, Rotom and Landorus, of course, have the same base speed. So since I, at that point, I kind of figured it looks like he's some type of weird mix set, bulky set of some sort, I figured I could outspeed him because I have max speed on my Rotom. And that proves to be just the case as Rotom surprisingly ends up KOing Landorus T. I did not see that coming. Uh, he does go out into Alakazam, which tells me that he has Shadow Ball. Because if he's lacking Shadow Ball, he may not KO with Psy Shock or, um, or Psy Kick, depending on uh, kind of damage rolls there. And so I'm just going to go right out into Togekiss to take any hit pretty easily. As I said in the team uh, matchup analysis, I wanted to have Togekiss to take those special hits. And I do get the flinch here against Alakazam. Um, unless he had some type of a weird coverage move, there's no way that he would have KO'd uh, Togekiss, barring a crit. So I'm not sure if that mattered too much. Uh, he does go out into Mew after the KO, and I'm just going to go for Air Slash again to see what type of Mew this is. Um, Air Slash doesn't do that much damage, and he surprises me with Poison Jab. Did not see that coming. I I was worried that he'd be a special Mew, otherwise we would have switched right out into Venusaur. And even then, he might have the Psychic coverage. Mew is so hard to play around. But I did put some bulk onto Jet Puff before the battle. Shoutouts to uh, Aqua Clauncher on Twitter for trading me uh, Jet Puff before I even started the league, really. And um, that bulk does allow me to live, which is going to come into play because I'm going to hold on to Togekiss, not only for differential, but for the Scarfed attacks. Um, you can have priority Sucker Punch. And so I brought Rotom in here to resist the Poison Jab and go for will -O If he is going to synchronize it back, I'm not too worried about it because I can just pain split that damage back off on something else. And uh, if you try to go for Sucker Punch, of course, the Sucker Punch would not work because I was going for will o -Wisp, which is a non-attacking move. Now, I do hit Galvantula on the way in, which is pretty nice. Um, Galvantula taking Stealth Rock damage, and now it has to take Burn damage. Uh, not only will that give me a chance to reveal its item if it has any type of recovery item, but it does not. And I didn't feel safe switching Venusaur in. I didn't want to give him a chance to go for Sticky Web if he was going to have it. I really wanted to force him into a position where he needed to KO me. Um, and he decided to go ahead and take the KO on a Rotom, which I don't blame him. And I was actually expecting Rotom to live Thunder if he went for it, but that is a very powerful Thunder, of course. Uh, and right here, this is why I saved Togekiss, because I'm Scarfed, and I get a critical hit on the Galvantula as well. I don't think the crit matter just because of how frail Galvantula is. Dazzling game from my Togekiss does about 80%, 77 to 80% or something like that. So that was a very easy KO to pick up. I could have stayed in here and gone for another Dazzling Gleam, but I was pretty sure he was going to mock Punch, and I can basically switch Venusaur into that for free. Uh, even Quad resisted, I only had 9 HP, so Technician boosted, Stab, I think he would have done at least 9 damage. No sense in sacrificing Togekiss like that. Um, but this does me, give me an opportunity to go ahead and use Synthesis with Venusaur. I could have Sludge Bombed on the Switch, but I wanted to get my HP back, uh, because now I know his mute is physical. He still has a Breloom left, of course, and so it's it's 
important to take these physical hits in this part in the battle. Now he does surprise me with Mew, of course at this point all I know is that he has Poison Jab, and it also turns out that he has Power Up Punch, so that was a little bit jarring at the time. I was like, okay, that could be really bad. But since he has Power Up Punch, even if he has Sucker Punch, Weavile can take that hit and KO it with the knockoff. Um, I do Poison Mew, which I don't know if that mattered or not. I guess it does matter for a sense of longevity. Um, also, it put his Mew in the spot where I can just Ice Shard him with my Weavile rather than going for knockoff. But fortunately, things get a little bit evened up here. I'm able to take the plus one Zen Headbutt, but he flinches Venusaur, which is pretty important because I definitely went for Sludge Bomb there to KO the Mew. Uh, but now at this point, he's going to be able to take down Venusaur. And I don't want to switch anything in here trying to save Venusaur because he could have... Uh, he, we know he has Poison Jab, the Zen Headbutt, and the Power Up Punch, but not knowing that last move means I don't want to take an unnecessary risk. And I'm forced to let Venusaur go down right there. Now at this point though, after the poison damage, I can just go out into Weavile and hit, click Ice Shard. Uh, Ice Shard does around 25% to a more bulky Mew. So I'm not sure what this Mew's HP investment is, but it's well below 25% of its HP. And that's going to be an easy KO for Corvo to pick up. Uh, I did bring Pursuit on Corvo this battle, but I didn't get an opportunity to use it. Uh, he could have tried to switch out right there, I guess, but I didn't want to... Even if he switched out, he would have been switching Breloom into an Ice Shard. Um, and of course, Breloom's priority, Mach Punch, they're both plus one priority, so Weavile is still going to go first, and I'm able to take out Breloom with an Ice Shard as well. So that's going to be a very... a pretty interesting battle, actually, and I'm going to win that 3-0. So now the Eternity Enders are going to be 2-0, and o, moving into week three. Um, my week three match, of course, is going to be against the Los Angeles Nidikings, and I should be having that match hopefully this weekend at some point, barring being stuck at work for all hours of the night. Uh, but thank you very much to the Portland Timbers for, to providing such a, an interesting battle. That was just, especially the Mew, I was just like, oh crap, power punch. I just had a, if I had a Oh snap button, I would have hit it at that moment, but I did not have that button available. So, I do hope you guys enjoyed this week's upload, and I look forward to seeing you guys for the team analysis matchup for the Los Angeles Nitty Kings. Have a great day, guys. I'll talk to you later. Bye.